Let's cover variable substitution. So variable substitution has to be described by cases. You know, you have to think about what would I do if I have a variable or a number or a function declaration or a function call, right? That's really how we think about uh, recursive algorithms. So what we have is uh, base cases and we have our recursive step. Our recursive step is our two we have two recursive steps, which is when we find the function declaration, right? Because it can have uh, an expression there or uh, in a function call because it can have uh, in either in the function or in the argument. The base cases will be the numbers and the variables. So let's go through this. Why do we have uh, all of these lines? So what this means is a, an if with these many branches, okay? This is how you should look at this. So what we have is if, so this is the formal notation. Let me describe it again. On the left, you have these brackets and then you have something on the left hand side. On the left hand side, you have a parameter. And then inside the brackets, you have two other parameters. And on the right hand side, you have the results, right? So what I'm saying is I want to replace X by V in this expression, right? So it's either a number or a variable where the variable matches the parameter or the two variables are dif distinct or you have um, a function declaration. And then there are two cases again, one where the, the parameter of the function declaration and the variable that you're finding match. And then you have another case is where you have a function declaration but the variable that you're finding is not the parameter in the, in the variable declaration. So if they're different, you have another branch for that. And finally, the case where you have a function application. Okay, so now let's go through each one and I'm gonna explain what happens. So if you wanna do a find and replace and you find a number, there are no possible variables. So you just return that number, right? And if you wanna do a find and replace of a variable X and you're finding X, you're trying to search for X, well, you just replace it by V, right? And if you're, you found a variable and you wanna do a find and replace by X, but the variable is not X, then you just return it, Y, whatever that variable was. In this case, Y. So now let's think about um, function declarations, right? So the idea is when you have a function declaration and you're you wanna find um, a variable X, and that function declaration also has X, what I want you to understand is that because of scoping and because parameters, they shadow, right? If you have an X outside of function declaration and an X in the parameter, uh, the X used in the body is gonna be a different X, right? Because it, it always refers to the closest definition. Thus, when you're trying to find and replace, you wanna be careful. And that's the only thing that is difficult here is when you find a function declaration and if you're searching for an X, and you find a function declaration that has X in the parameter, then you cannot replace anything inside of that function declaration. So you effectively just return the function declaration as is. You don't find and replace anything else in its body. Next is the case where you go through a function declaration that has a parameter with a name that is, that is different than the variable that you're searching for, in which case just find and replace in its body. No problem at all. Finally, you have a function call. And this one is pretty easy. You find and replace on the function and you find and replace on the argument. Pretty simple. So you have all these cases and this is variable substitution. So what I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm explaining this function subst and what I'm doing is explaining this notation here. Okay. So essentially, if you want to implement evaluation, you really need to implement substitution, right? Variable substitution, where you find a variable, replace it by a value. Uh, and then this is the English description of the algorithm. Um, and then in the next video, oh, I, I don't need the next video. I can explain it just to you now. So in the test fa file that you will, that I will give you for this homework, you will see that I actually give you a, a shorter version which is check our eval. And this is kind of dependent 
I don't still know if I'm going to give it to you because um, if you haven't done the... Um, because it assumes you have done homework one. Uh, sorry, homework two, the parsing. Uh, so it's only available if you have the parsing implemented. But if it is, then it is just a... You know, like we use in the tests, check equal, question mark. So check equal is checking if two values are equal. Check R eval is you give it an S expression and it will parse it and then evaluate it automatically for you. And on the right hand side, you give the value you expect. So uh, check R eval is just something to make it much simpler to write test cases on the evaluation. Okay. Uh, so these are some examples. So as you can notice, the first parameter um, or argument, so the first argument is always going to be an S expression. So code, and on the right hand side I'm going to show you, again also code, right, but it represents the evaluation, the result of the evaluation, right? So if you have a number one, you evaluate that down to one. If you have a lambda, you return that lambda. But if you have a, a function call, you apply, right, the function to the number. And in this case, more interesting, you have two nested lambdas. And what you do is you finally replace y, which is here. So effectively, you're returning a lambda. So it makes things way simpler to write, but it does assume that you have um, the parser implemented. Okay, so hope you have a good one. Have a good weekend.